It's hot, it's muggy, but at least it's not out at sea. Hello, Thailand. Welcome to the Kingdom of Thailand, famous for its friendly people and ancient culture, and now famous for the arrival of the supercarrier USS George Washington. And as such, being the permanently forward deployed carrier, we operate up and down the Western Pacific every year. While the media is excited to come aboard the ship, the crew is just excited to get off. The ship is docked in Lam Shabang. There's really nothing in Lam Shabang. This is where you want to come, Pattaya Beach. It's a combination of the beaches of Rio de Janeiro, the high-end resorts of Miami, toss in a little Acapulco. Hi, you're talking to a tourist whose every moves among the purists. It's like Mardi Gras with, uh, with a bunch of steroids. It wasn't all that long ago that Pattaya Beach was just a small fishing village. It was in the 1960s during the Vietnam War that the U.S. Army was looking for a place to send troops on R&R from Vietnam. This is where they came, and the rest is history. I'm here to relax, take it easy, Skype with the kids. That's what it's tired. And with the economy in your favor, a stay in a luxurious hotel is dirt cheap. Before you pay for your room, ask the front desk if you can come up and take a look at it. What you see on the internet isn't always reality. I can live with this. Getting around is easy. Just jump on a bot bus. Bot is the local currency. A ride shouldn't cost more than 10 bot or a couple dollars. You'll find it all here from local treasures to kickboxing matches. While I feast at a roadside stand, our sailors are letting some fish feast on their feet. Yes, the fish are eating your dead skin away. And, uh, but it's like somebody tickling with a feather for hours. It's uh, pretty relaxing. That's funny, they're actually avoiding this sailor's feet. I wonder what that means. Oh, back at that roadside stand, a couple hours later, the chicken had its revenge, so maybe this is something you'll want to avoid. Experiencing the local culture, GW sailors took elephant rides through the jungle. Others visited temples and golden Buddhas. And then there were the boat rides through Bangkok's inner city. For me, I opted for some high-flying fun, zip lining through the jungle. To get to the first platform, it's a 15-minute walk uphill through, well, a drizzling rainforest. It's absolutely beautiful here, and I probably would have paid the money just to do this. Ten people on a tiny platform swaying in the breeze on what feels like a mile high. Like Tarzan, we swing from tree to tree to tree. 23 zip lines in all, some as long as, well, the length of an aircraft carrier. Describe the feeling when you're on the zip line going across. Just a little quick rush. Um, nothing too scary. A lot of fun still. <laughs> After the third or fourth zip line, the fear goes away and you find yourself in awe of the rainforest around you. The view? Simply amazing. If you ever wanted to know what it was like to fall from a 50-story building, this is it. After the 23 different zip lines, it's a nice, easy descent to the ground down below. Way below. What a way to spend the day. For your courage, you reward it with a free meal. Soup, fried egg with fried rice, fruit, and some sort of rice whiskey which I could have used before the first zip line. Back at Pattaya Beach, the party is still raging. But for me, my comfy bed is calling my name. Tomorrow, we continue our quest of World War II history. In 1957, Columbia Pictures released the film Bridge Over the River Kwai. It won seven Academy Awards, including Best Picture. The movie was about the building of a bridge by World War II POWs under the merciless Japanese. 
boarding a tour bus, we're headed to the real deal. And this is the famed bridge, or at least the one built after the Allies bombed the original. Walking across it, you can't help but feel a connection to another place in another time. The film is a classic, and because of it, each year, thousands flock here. Back in 1942, this is what the area looked like when POWs were building the bridge over the River Kwai. But all these decades later, the jungle has turned into a booming city with a lot of tourism focusing around a bridge and a movie. You know, obviously the movie brings back a lot of memories, so it's a, it's a, one of those places where you, you know, you're happy to come here and you know, see, what, uh, see what actually happened. The bridge is just one small piece of what has become known as the Death Railway. They say one POW died for every railroad tie between Burma and Thailand. That's more than 100,000 in all. Taking a speedboat upstream, where the river joins up with another and the current picks up speed, we visit a museum dedicated to preserving the history of the POWs, how they lived, how they were treated, and the artifacts they left behind. Helmets, swords, and shells. And then there's the POW Cemetery, the final resting place for not just Americans, but Brits and Australians. You have to have a true appreciation for history to come on this tour. It took four hours in a bus and 20 minutes on a boat to see all this. But seeing where our forefathers and our allies fought, died, and are buried makes it all worth it. Following the four-hour bus ride back and pounding the pavement to pick up a couple last-minute gifts, there's only one more thing left to do. This. Oh, yeah. This should hold me over until we drop anchor again. Where? Hopefully home, but remember, this is the Navy and nothing's guaranteed.